Happy Valentine's Day, Gauchos, and welcome to another episode of UCSB TV. Did you know that the holiday has its origins in a Roman festival held in mid-February? The festival, which celebrated the coming of spring, included fertility rites and the pairing off of women with men by lottery. Oof. At the end of the 5th century, a pope replaced the festival with St. Valentine's Day, and it came to be celebrated as a day of romance from about the 14th century. Today, the holiday is the second greatest financial burden for people in love, only to be beaten by Christmas. According to Yahoo News, millennials between the ages of 24 and 39 are most likely to overspend on Valentine's Day than those who are from older generations. This young adult group spends, on average, $208 for holiday romance, including gifts, dining, and entertainment. Gen X, on the other hand, between the ages of 40 and 55, spent 160 on average, while baby boomers between the ages of 56 and 74 spent $101. In any case, here's a sonnet from the old bar to distract you from the fact that your money is about to be MIA. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall death brag thou wanderst in his shade, when in eternal lines to time then grossed. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to these. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. How's it going, Gauchos? Happy V Day! That V could stand for Valentine's or very lonely, it's interpretive. Let's check out this week's news, it's a heavy one. In About Time news, the Daily Nexus reports that the UCSB Interfraternity Council has created new policies in response to several sexual assault allegations that happened last quarter. One policy has placed a ban on hard alcohol, which is alcohol above 15% ABV, and another policy introduces a sober host at all Interfraternity Council events. Sober host is there to, quote, take charge, take the lead, and make sure that everything is running as it should be, unquote. These hosts will wear neon vests, so they'll be easily spotted, so if you're at a frat party anytime soon and feel unsafe, keep your eyes open for a neon vest. As Council President Jason Stone detailed at the end of the Task Force for Safer Social Events in Isla Vista meeting on February 3rd, quote, risk prevention doesn't end after you change one rule, it's ongoing, and it's to continue to create a safer and safer environment, unquote. To check out more about this story, you can find out the full article on the Daily Nexus website. In other frat parties suck, let's throw our own parties and not invite them news, the Nexus reports that the UCSB Title IX office is investigating Sigma Nu because of reported transphobic behavior that took place at one of their parties on January 31st. First posted on the subreddit r slash UC Santa Barbara, the story spread to free and for sale and garnered attention and disgust from the student body. Arena Alvarez, the Title IX director, said that if the office collects enough information, they will see if the report falls under one of two policies, the non-discrimination policy or the sexual violence and sexual harassment policy. Even if these policies don't apply, the case can be taken over by the Office of Student Life. If you want to learn more about the story, you can check out the Reddit post or the article on the Daily Nexus website. That's all I can take for this week's news. Now let's go to Maddie with sports. Welcome back to Sports Gauchos and happy Valentine's week. Whether you're spending your February 14th watching this episode with your boo or watching this episode with some Freebs nachos, I'm sure your V-Day is a thousand times better because of UCSB TV. We'll always love you guys, especially you, Alan. Now let's talk about some scores. Last week, softball and women's water polo both had tournaments. Softball walked away with a one and four record and women's water polo with a two and two. Records aside, it was a great weekend for some quality team time. Men's tennis took on Fresno State and lost by a slim 4-3 score. Same with women's basketball, who played Hawaii and walked away losing 63-51. Both were super close matches and even more fun to watch. But we still had five wins last week. Both men's and women's basketball beat UC Irvine. And men's basketball won their other game of the week versus Hawaii. What a great week for our program. Bringing in the other two wins of the week was men's volleyball, who took the dub against Ohio State and Penn State. West Coast, best coast, am I right or am I right? 
Shout out to our athletic gauchos for an action-packed week five. The action continues with week six. We have no home games this week, but almost all of our teams in season have games away from campus. Send your best thoughts to golf, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's swimming, softball, baseball, and men's and women's tennis as they take on some tough matches. Win or lose, we're all proud to be gauchos. That's it for sports. Thanks for sharing the love with us this week. Now to Shreya with events. Hey everyone, happy Valentine's Day and welcome back to another episode of UCSB TV. Whether you're spending the holiday with a significant other or by yourself, again, here are some events you can look forward to attending in the next week. On Wednesday, February 19th, poet and artist Evolve Benton will host a poetry reading and film screening in the MCC Theater at 6 p.m. They will read poems from their collection, Sir, poetry dedicated to boyhood and black queer love, and will screen their film, The Boy Doc, which explores narratives of gender expression and queerness through the varying lenses of the black diaspora. Also on Wednesday, Anita Hill, women's rights icon and social justice advocate, will be in Campbell Hall to discuss her story of how she was wronged by powerful men and a corrupt system. Her powerful testimony accusing Judge Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment served as a catalyst for many more women to come forward against their aggressors and in many ways inspired the modern day Me Too movement. Tickets for this event are only $10 for UCSB students and the event starts at 7.30 p.m. so make sure you attend. For those of you who are politically inclined, head to Pollock Theatre on Thursday, February 20th to see screenings of The West Wing and Veep at 7 p.m. Moderator Patrice Petro will join directors David Mandel of Veep and Eli Addy of The West Wing for a post-screening discussion. To learn more about how TV affects politics in the public and vice versa, RSVP for this event now. That's all I have for this week's events. Thanks for tuning in, and for more information on these or any other events, check out the MCC website or the UCSB events page. Now back to you, Min. Thank you everyone for that wonderful update. As always, don't forget that you can find our episodes on the AS YouTube channel, on our UCSB TV Facebook page, and on Gotcha Space. And to all our dedicated viewers out there, thank you and we love you. I kind of messed it up at the end. I said this week news. <laughs> My palms are sweaty. No, we're just going to do it. Following Hannah's lead. Ugh.